Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead tutorial series. In this episode we're going to be talking about Z levels, uh, specifically basements. So most uh, most roguelikes that you're familiar with uh, exist in the X and Y dimensions. So X is uh, east-west moving this direction, the Y is uh, north-south is this particular direction, and then Z is to move up or down. So if we go into the basement, that is one Z level lower. So if you ever hear me say Z level, I'm referring to verticality. I'm referring to upstairs, downstairs, and, and, and such. X and Y, I will just refer to as north, south, east, west is, is an easy way of gauging that. So most, most roguelikes, they don't really simulate Z levels in any capacity. So if you think of something like NetHack or Angband or any of the really popular roguelikes, they exist in the X and Y dimensions, and they do have dungeon levels, so you will travel up and down dungeon levels, but most of the time what they do is they pause everything outside of that level. So NetHack, when you go from level 1 to level 2, level 1 freezes as it was, and then when you come back to that level, they'll generate new monsters or simulate monster movement or what have you. Um, and, 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 and like Angband, it completely removes the previous Z level. So if you go from dungeon level 50 to dungeon level 100, it completely removes the previously generated level 50. And if you go back, it generates a new level and it's completely different. Cataclysm is, is not really like that. Cataclysm is persistent and with the current settings. So if we go to options and we check, I want to say general, um, we're looking for Z levels. They are now on by default. Is it debug? It's not because it's it's the game now. Uh, we're looking for. Can I? I can't search this menu. Whatever. Uh, somewhere in this menu, it. No, don't 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 change. Don't whatever I did. Don't don't change it. Um, Z levels are enabled by default, and what Z levels are is that. Cataclysm, because it's a persistent world and it needs to simulate things on multiple Z levels. Sometimes, if you're in near a prison or a uh, a science lab or something, or an apartment tower, something that has many many Z levels to it, verticality or subterranean levels to it, um, it will slow down your game a little bit. You'll hear noises like we've been hearing underground, above ground. That's because Cataclysm is simulating enemy movement underneath that it's actually making the characters move underground and above ground there's stuff that's happening that you can't see as the player like right now we cannot see the basement of this floor uh, of this house but if there are enemies down there they are actually moving around if they're smashing stuff downstairs we would hear that um, we might hear them moving although i usually take the poor hearing trait i don't think i did on this character because we didn't want to hinder ourselves while we're doing tutorials but so there's a lot of stuff going on on the other Z levels. So when you approach stairs and we have Z levels turned on, which again, they're on by default. So unless you're on a really bad computer, I would like I'd recommend leaving them on. They're really nice to have. It gives you some additional functionality that we'll talk about when we get there, like hauling up and down stairs, peeking up and down stairs. Um, I'd recommend leaving them on. They're on by default. And so when you approach stairs in the game, there is a small chance that an enemy might pop up the stairs. So if we walk over here and we start making noise in this area, let's say we smash some furniture that's right here, um, and then all of a sudden the enemy pops up the stairs, it's because they actually heard us from downstairs. And because we're they're fully functional while they're down there, they start moving up to get us. Now, this rarely ever happens. It usually only happens if there's a ton of monster density because the odds of them coming up the stairs are not very good. And what that means is that like, if you're in uh, like the safest place to be in the game is often on higher Z levels or lower Z levels because zombies tend to not target stairs very much and they don't really understand the concept of, okay, well, I heard noises over here, so what I have to do is walk all the way over here, come up the stairs, and then go back and get them. They don't really work that way, and so they don't really think about stairs the way that a player does. So oftentimes, if you're looking for a base, a basement is a good place to set up. Um, if you can get in an apartment building and you can get like four floors up, you're basically guaranteed that nothing will ever travel all the way from the ground floor up four flights of stairs to you. So Z levels can serve a lot of value in that way in protecting your character, protecting your base. It's one of the reasons why we set up our bed in the basement in the evac shelter. Even though there are stairs and you know you would think like all oh, zombies can fall downstairs, 
the simple fact that we put it in the basement makes it even less likely that we're going to get encountered uh, by, by the undead while we're sleeping. So Z levels work a lot to your benefit in that way. Um, and it's pretty rare that they'll come up the stairs. If we go down and we fight on the stairs and then we come upstairs, there's a good chance they'll follow us. But if we're just moving around, they're probably not going to come up the stairs unless they're already on the stairs and we're making noise close to them. They might come upstairs. But it's just something to keep in the back of your mind when you approach a stairway. Just think like, okay, what if a zombie pops up right now? Am I? Do I have enough stamina to deal with them? Is my health okay? Am I? If I'm about to get in a fight, am I in a good spot to do that? Because um, if we're smashing a bunch of furniture and we're out of stamina, maybe don't go over to the stairs and hang out just on the off chance that something came up to meet you. So that's one thing to talk about Z levels. The other thing about Z levels is that basements are some of the most valuable things that can be, like in a house, the basement is often the most valuable place to go. Basements depend a lot there are many different varieties of basement they come in a few flavors many of them look the same so you'll see the same things over and over and over and most of them are not super valuable but on the off chance you get one of the good ones it can really change your run especially on day one there's a particular basement layout that is basically just gun shelving it's just shelves of guns and it's like on day one, if you get your hands on, you know, a couple guns and you have maybe a hundred rounds of ammunition, you're in a pretty great spot. If we found a gun, we would go up here and fight those survivor zombies because they can drop some pretty good stuff. Um, and, you know, they can drop more ammunition and all kinds of stuff. So it would change the way that we're playing the game. So it's really important that you check basements when you come across them. When you go to a stairs and you want to check things out, you can peek downstairs if you have Z levels on. So we press the peek key, which is capital X, as we discussed. And we actually use the, the greater than, less than symbols the same way we would if we were moving up or down the stairs. So greater than symbol will let us peek down the stairs. This simple peek has revealed a lot of information to us. Now, you would think, like, oh, it's just a stairwell, whatever. We can see that these doors have been smashed. These are hinges that are being displayed right now. This little icon is a hinge. Um, and we can see that these doors have been smashed just by looking at them. And some, similarly, some of the furniture here has been smashed. So we know that there's a zombie down here. Because when we cleared this area, we see that the stairs are here and here. We never saw an enemy in this area. This door was closed, I believe, when we came through. Never saw an enemy, so that pretty much guarantees that there's an enemy down there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait a few turns to see if they come up the stairs. They didn't. So we're going to go over here instead and peek down these stairs just to get a little bit more eyes. Oh, okay. So with Cataclysm, sometimes the stairs don't line up properly. Um, so these stairs go to the exact same place that these stairs do. It's a little bit silly. I'm not sure why it's like that. I think because... <sighs> I think because map locations for basements always contain one stairwell and they're randomly assigned to houses. So like this house planned for a double stairwell, but you can't plan for a double stairwell because the basement that is generated may only have one. So it's just putting them to the same location. It's a little complicated. It's a map gen thing. Um, really, they should just remove one set of stairwells from this house would be the best way to do that. Um, but so we know that these go both places. So there's really nothing we can do about that. We have to go down that that uh, that particular stairwell. So we might as well just go down. Uh, I should have checked before I did this to make sure we have our weapon in our hands, which we do. We're having the cudgel, which again, the cudgel can't make reach attacks. So we're going to need to go into melee to fight whatever enemies we find. And that could be very dangerous. So we're going to be very quick to retreat in the event of encountering a dangerous enemy. I will say that although there are many beneficial basements, there are at least two basements that are very, very dangerous as well. So you really need to be careful. I'm not going to spoil everything, but um, two basements that come to mind contain... One contains many monsters that are very dangerous, and one generally contains one scary-ish monster. Um, so you just need to be careful. Most of the time, though, when you see smashed furniture... That's a zombie. Typically, animals and the monsters I'm talking about don't smash things. So we're very likely looking at a zombie. So what we're going to do is just continue moving and peeking. And there we've revealed a zombie. So what I'm going to do is go back upstairs. 
and see if they actually track me upstairs. Because I would rather engage them one at a time up the stairs than risk fighting more than one. So we went down. We do hear something over here. So there's likely another enemy. And you'll see he tried to grab us, which would have been bad because that's when we get bit. So we're going to head upstairs again. It's weird that it put us on these stairs this time. And we're just going to wait. I really would like this person to come up the stairs so we could fight them upstairs. It doesn't look like they're going to cooperate, so we have to fight them here. So we're just going to engage them. We've been grabbed, which is this uh, little hook indicator above my head, which, uh, again, will depend on your tile set. But this tile set, that's what that looks like. And again, being grabbed is very bad because zombies only bite you when they grab you. So we can either try to move, which will break us free from the grab, or we can just hit him and risk being bitten. And I honestly, I think I'm just going to hit him because we have the cudgel. He's not coming upstairs. We can't really engage him. We don't have room to maneuver, so kiting him isn't an option. We just fight him. We hit him for seven. We hit him for nine. He tried to bite us, but he failed to penetrate our armor. What that means is that our uh, probably our fur coat protected us. What that means is that it hit the 90% chance of hitting our garment, and it did not deal enough damage to, to overcome our armor value, so it was absorbed by our armor. So that protected us. We'll continue hitting him. Uh, every time it says quickly strike, I believe that means it has triggered our rapid strike ability, which means it costs less movement, but it deals less damage. I would prefer to hit him for more damage than this. Tries to claw at us, but he fails, which means he missed us, which probably means it was our dodge skill that protected us. And we'll just keep bump attacking him. He hit us in the eyes, which uh, we never talked about that. Uh, if you get hit in the eyes, it deals damage to your head. It's just that the eyes are tracked separately for armor reasons. So, And uh, we're going to kill him any, any minute now. He tries to grab you. It says tries to grab you as well, but it, you bat it away. I'm guessing that's just a conflicting message. Normally it would be a second zombie trying to grab you. It looks like even though he's grabbed us, he tried to grab us again. So it said as well, implying it was a different creature, but it wasn't. Hit us in the torso, and he bit us in the torso, but we did not get a deep bite wound, which is good. And we'll kill him. Last enemy holding you collapses, so we're no longer... We're, we're no longer grabbed. You'll see that time it said precisely strike uh, for 17 damage. That's our other ability. So if we go, you'll see that on a critical, which we, it, it was, um, we stun the enemy for two turns, uh, which is irrelevant in this situation. So uh, because both because he died uh, is the main thing. So we did hear more sounds over here, which makes me think there's at least one more zombie. Let's we smashed his corpse. Let's look at his body. He has some heroin on him which normally I would not take, but we don't have any strong painkillers, so we might as well take it just to have it in our back pocket for an emergency. There's also some weed seeds over here, which makes me think that this is a weed basement. Um, there's a certain layout of uh, basement that contains marijuana. In fact, there are two main locations in basements that contain marijuana, grow ops. So we're gonna, hearing another one to the southwest. Okay, so now we've spotted a tough zombie. Tough zombies, again, remember I said that it's difficult to assess uh, each enemy individually and just give you a big overview of that. Tough zombies are basically regular zombies, but they are slightly, they're, they're tougher, right? That's the whole, the whole point. Um, here it's depicted wearing like football armor. They're just a little bit harder to kill. They have more health. They have, uh, you know, they're, I think they're a little bit, I think they're about the same speed. They have a little bit more durability uh, and they have more HP. Which means they're a little more pain in the butt to fight. I would really like to get him outside, but I don't want to repeat... Bites my arm. I don't want to repeat the same issue we had. Taking a lot of hits here. That we had with the other zombie trying to deal with him in the doorway. He has blinded us by biting our eyes, which, fun fact, is not good. There we have another regular zombie. It's for some reason not showing up here. Are you also a tough zombie? Where's my cursor? I want to see. You're just a regular zombie. Why aren't you on my compass? Okay. We precisely hit it, which stunned him. Remember, we dealt with that before. I'm going to back up because the goal is to prevent two of them from engaging us at once. We're also running out of stamina. 
which is not great. We have enough stamina to deal with them both, but we know also that we can retreat upstairs and that they're not very likely to follow us. Just going to quickly deal with them. Um, we're going to restore our, H our uh, stamina. You heard why, why, why. Stop catching breath. No. What would be saying that? It's from the west, which is the prison, so I'm not worried about that. We can now smash the bodies. Check them for loot. Really nothing. Um, nothing in good shape that we would want. I like hoodies and I like the leather pants, but we can't. They're damaged and they're filthy. And now we're going to just carefully check. That probably is all the enemies we're going to encounter in this small basement. Great. And you'll see this is one of the more common basic uh basement types it's just storage essentially what i do want to point out is that this is a water heater they often contain water if we look at our character we're very thirsty at the moment so we're going to go ahead and take a few swigs of clean water out of the water heater um, to take care of our thirst and you'll see that thirst menu goes away and you'll see it also changed our stomach um, notes and that's because we've now filled our stomach with water this is a furnace you can start a fire safely in the furnace if that's something you want to do uh, and then we're just going to loot everything. We'll take the wood saw because that's good for making a repair kit, which we're going to want probably. We'll check the shelving. Looks like army winter pants, which are good because they have storage. They're like cargo pants and they're a little bit more durable because they're thicker. Problem is they have a lot of warmth and we don't really want that at the moment. I also don't really want to fill my inventory with clothing. So we're going to look at other stuff first. Really not much here. Coffee maker we could take, but I don't often drink coffee in the game, and I don't know if you need it. Don't really want any of the clothing. Check the bookshelves. Pretty good. Guns and ammo uh, is a skill book. Ham Illustrated is a skill book. We'll take both of those. Liverlicious recipes your kids will love. That appears to be a crafting book, which I've never seen before, so we'll take that. We have a Shotokan Shotokan karate handbook which is a martial arts training manual these are special um they teach you martial arts combat styles i don't usually read these but we'll take it we'll check this pair of welding goggles we'll take those as well we're going to need those when we work on our car welding and metallurgy another skill book we'll take that i like three liter glass jars we'll take that as well a hygrometer is used to measure humidity apparently i don't really care or need that Soldering iron, very valuable. We'll take that. Everything else can stay. And you'll see this was, again, one of the low-impact basements. Honestly, I don't mind clearing out a basement like this just because I don't all know what spawns here. But uh, for the amount of combat that we got into and the damage we took and the pain that we're now in, I don't know that it was worth the, the effort that we put into it. Uh, especially because once we looted it, what did we really get out of here? We got the soldering iron, which is very good. Um, and we got some skill books, which are fine. But honestly, I've never seen these three before. So I don't know if they're even good. There's going to be an expansion of skill books being added to the game. in a, the Probably before 0.F that will uh, expand what books are required to find recipes and stuff. So I'm wondering if that's the beginning of that implementation. I don't know. I've never seen them before. So we got some stuff, but I don't know if it was worth putting ourselves in danger and taking some damage. You'll see our, it's not like our health is in a bad spot. We will recover this amount of health in a day or two uh, if we treat our wounds in any way. But mostly we're in pain now, and that pain stacks up. And again, remember, pain reduces your speed, which means we're less capable in combat and that's a very dangerous situation to be in additionally it lowers our stats which why am i still i'm not thirsty anymore this should go away um it lowers our stats which also makes us less combat capable remember strength contributes to the damage that we deal so having reduced strength means we deal less damage and that is not great in fact i'm going to go back down and drink a little bit more until we're sated until we're um slaked and you'll see we're now listed as full because our stomach is full of water and uh, we're slaked, which means we're not thirsty. So that thirst penalty will go away. And now we've fully cleared the house. So we'll go back to base here and drop our stuff off. And um, yeah, we'll probably, honestly, we got into a little combat. I'm still in a position where I feel comfortable going back out. We could go loot another house. 
We could call it a day and stay in the base. We could try to uh, upgrade our knife spear to a knife spear so that we would have a less flimsy item, um, a less flimsy spear that we could use. You'll see we now have all the materials required to make either of these knife spears. And um, yeah, there's a lot that we can do now. Uh, before we head back out, we probably would create a knife spear. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's go to our crafting menu. We need a knife spear. For this, we're going to need a tool with drilling. Ah, we don't have a tool with drilling, so we would have to craft something with drilling. Then we would need wood. Can we do non-drilling? No, this also requires drilling. These two recipes make the same item, but they function differently. Um, simple knife spear is a um, flimsy version of the knife spear, and then you can upgrade that using this recipe, or you can use this recipe and just craft it from scratch which is what we would do. So we need a tool with drilling. So let's go uh, lowercase q, drill. And you'll see we have no options available to us. So we can't actually make a tool with drilling, so we can't make the knife spear. It's pretty, I guess, understandable because the goal is to bolt the knife to a stick. The problem is I could just hammer nails through it and I don't think it should require drilling. Um, obviously, a nail through is not the same thing as drilling something and putting a bolt in it. But uh, I don't really see why I need to have drilling for this. So that's a bit of a bummer. Where am I going to get drilling? I can't craft drilling. Probably because our survival is so low. If we leveled survival again, it might open up like a, a hand drill that we could make. Like a drill is not a hard thing to make. It's one of the most basic survival tools you can make by hand. So I'm guessing that would be survival too. Really don't feel like grinding. I mean, we're at 22 minutes. I guess we can look at grinding survival really quick. P colon survival. Oh, what do you, pine boughs? No, planks. I'd rather not use planks. Do we have anything with splintered wood? No. Okay, well. We could just use planks, I guess. Now that we've explored at least one house, we know we can go there to get more firewood as well. So I think we'll just make tinder. Super dumb that it takes a full plank to make... Oh, it makes 50 tinder. Okay. Uh, or we, we'll use the birch bark because I don't care about the birch bark. We'll make five in case we ruin it and need more materials. We made tinder. Where are we at on survival? 17% is all I got out of that. Uh, okay. I mean, so that's not great. Let's... Uh, digging sticks. Throwing sticks. One minute and two seconds. Okay, let's go gather materials for throwing sticks. Smash this tree for the long sticks. Smash. Okay, we're real bad at smashing. Let's go ahead and wait. Get our stamina back. It literally gave me nothing. Okay. Let's find another little baby tree here. There we go. And we'll butcher these. Cut up long stri sticks. Yes. Nope. Did that wrong. Okay. Uh, long stick. Yes. Long stick. Yes. So now we have heavy sticks. Grab the heavy sticks. So we can make throwing sticks. Survival. Throwing sticks. Takes a minute and seven seconds. Obviously we can make de digging sticks as well, but it takes so long. Uh, so we'll just make four throwing sticks. Okay, how did we do with that? 25%. Did they suddenly nerf the crafting? Because I made quite a few things and we barely gained any experience. Okay, that's fine. We're not going to grind survival. I don't feel like doing that. So for now, wield the cudgel. That's why it took so long to smash because we were wielding tinder or whatever. Don't want to kill you, raccoon. Just get out of here. So I think that's going to be it for this episode. So for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll be back with more of the tutorial. Let's play in the near future, and I will see you in the next episode.